Yes, welcome back, you guys. It's another Thursday afternoon, and of course, someone gets booted out. But Hello. Uh, while we wait for them to come back, um, this is a very special lunch and lean. Da -da -da -da. You like my Barbara Walters, like Setta? It's very special going on and stuff, you know. Okay, okay I'm nobody's Barbara Walters. I get it. What about Quadria <laughs> Walters? Can I be that? Am I giving Quadria Walters? You're giving Ooh. Tamara Hall. Okay, never mind. Oh, no, don't say that. Okay. 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 All right. We got a full house today, you guys. Um, as you see, it is the Married to Medicine panel. Um, and we have a lot to discuss. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Antonio. Hey, Jasmine. You know, Jasmine back on the scene. And, you know, I raised them all hell and stone cold Steve Austin, baby. But she's back. Okay. Look at anyway, that. Say I my nickname. Say, guys. say my nickname. Gargle. Gargle. <laughs> No, nah, y'all don't don't come on here trying to disrespect oh nobody. Man. Don't do that. <laughs> don't so we do fight, that. we you, fight back. You we go low, back. we gonna take it to the flow. To hell. We Speaking of, fight back. I think no. all of us have had to fight back. We got, we fight back. These folks right here. We the fight back crew. We, we hop off this panel. Okay. We gonna hop off. <laughs> that is so bad. Anyways, um, we know it's lunchtime, so we're gonna get right into it. I actually don't have any snacks. Um, you know what I'm saying since. Allegedly, we have room to improve. I guess I'll starve myself for a snack today and get right into the main course, and we're going to get right into it, you guys. But before we do, I just wanted to thank you guys, um, Jasmine, for you know coming on in the initial inter incarnations, um, Sammy as well, um, Antonio as well, Asia in the past. Um, you guys, we and Jamie, um, this platform has grown uh, over the weeks, and I really, really am excited about its growth. So I just want to thank everybody who has come in and for those to come because we'll be seeing more faces coming soon as we progress on a lunch and lean. With that being said, um, that's all the sentimental sugary crap I got for this week because we're going to get right into it. Let's just get right to it. Let's hey. cut the crap. So as you all know, Love B. Scott broke this week that there have been, well, that the Real Housewives of Atlanta um, for season 16 is either going to get a full or partial reboot ahead of its upcoming season. Um, there have been various media outlets reporting on this. Some saying it's true, some saying it's false. Um, but that the girls have been allegedly um, forewarned going into the reunion that this may be their last scene and season. Um, so before we get into a full breakdown of what happens, of what's going to happen or what we believe should happen. Um, I have three of the most opinionated leaners um, <laughs> that we could get. And I just want to know, starting with Sammy, Sammy, are you for a reboot fully, a partial reboot, or do you believe that this same cast can go ahead and move forward and provide compelling television? Well, we've said before it takes once once they get a cast together, it takes some time for them to actually grow and you know be able to authentically be themselves around one another. So I think stopping it again and then throwing a whole new set of girls and then trying to get it get it going again, it's going to be pointless. Um, I'm not here for a full reboot. I I do understand they're doing like they do any other time, taking a few of the girls out and bringing some new ones in. But if we're going to do that, we also have to make sure their production, you know, they got they they stuff together too because we can't put places all on the girls we've seen them complain about how they've given us story they've given us story but um it, we don't get to see it it's not being showcased because production is doing whatever they're doing behind the scenes so a full reboot no but you know shifting and making it make sense i'm here for that okay uh jasmine well I am here for a full reboot. No, just kidding. I'm actually here for a partial as well. Um, I think there is room to grow. Of course, if you saw Monday's episode, 
<laughs> then you know that I feel like, you know, that the production is not like a big, big part of it to me. Like I, I understand giving people the story stuff like that, but I don't want to just put so blame on them like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that, you know, having a couple, maybe I think taking three people out would be beneficial. So, but I honestly... And I, I, a lot of I've been seeing a lot of people say Sanya should go, but I think that she should stay. I think that she could grow with a different cast. So, I think she okay. was that not rubbed off on me, but she grew on me. So, we're definitely gonna get into that. All right, Antonio, what do you think? I mean, just um, fully partial. I'm sorry, what you think, Jasmine? I was just saying I was adjusting my goggles and playing with my. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus! Okay, uh, <laughs> partial reboot, full reboot, same cast. What do you think? Um, I am definitely for, I don't think a full re, I don't think Atlanta is at the point to me where it's ready for a full reboot, um, like, you know, a New York. Um, I, I'm all for a, a partial reboot. And I understand um, about, you know, giving the girls time to kind of gel together and things like that. I feel like, you know, it, after season one, for sure, but season two of the same group being together, we should see some type of, advancement and we have it i'm not saying that it's all on them i i definitely feel that it's you know pro their pro producer or the person that works specifically with them is responsible for making sure that there is a flow as well and i don't know if it's coming from production or the higher ups or whom but um they have to take some accountability for that as well but definitely a partial reboot okay um as far as i'm concerned um I think a couple of years ago, I was actually for a full reboot. I think that if there was any of any time to do it, because they took that hiatus after season 13, last season would have been the season to reintroduce a new group of girls and they didn't do it. So I'm not for a full reboot at this moment, but somebody got to go. And um, in that sense of everything, I do believe that a partial reboot for the cast is going to work because um, the class, the cast is so divided that um, mm -hmm. it just doesn't work. And then it's not like they're divided, but still have chemistry. They don't really have great chemistry. I think that they are, it's kind of unfortunate because I think the last couple of episodes and especially the after show, when I saw Sonya versus Sheree and Marlo, I was like, wait a minute, they are finally starting to get it. You know what I mean? But it's too little and it's too late at this point. Even if they get it, I don't think that what I saw was enough for me to want to see another season of this current group. So um, we're going to move on to something that I want to ask you guys, as you guys have touched on it a little bit, and that is really who to blame. And the reason why I ask who do you guys feel like is to blame for this is because, thanks to our friends at The Reality Rundown, um, Eric Fuller, who is the executive producer of The Real Housewives of Atlanta, um, has come under a lot of public scrutiny and he went ahead and finally sent this message out. Y'all know I can't see that. So if anybody wants to read it, please be my guest. I'm not an editor. I do not make casting decisions. I don't choose what scenes make it or not. If you're gonna come for me, come for me for what I'm responsible for. E D Come on, Thank goggles. you so much, my sweet baby. You better come on and goggle it down. <laughs> and she goggled that. Okay, um, so with that being said, um, then Bravo went ahead and sent out a, um, a notice basically stating, well, a response to Love B. Scott basically stating that they don't support or advocate for anyone to send death threats to the, to the production team and that they are not the ones to blame for the edit. So I want to explain this because it seems like there's a lot of confusion nobody really understands who to point the finger at we just know this is the production company and the production company produces the show and we don't like it so this is normally how it works each housewife is assigned a segment producer the segment producer's job is to get involved in these ladies lives find out what's going on with them personally and make sure that that is what we see on the screen. Now, the only thing about it is you have housewives that are super transparent and want it all out on the screen. And then you have certain housewives, Robin Dixon, who hide certain oh. things from their lives. 
And then because they're hiding things and using things, right, <clears throat> to cover up what's really going on, the segment producer can only produce what is provided. Right. So if you don't provide it, it's very hard to get it to come out, especially if said housewife has an alliance with people who actually know that's what's going on and they don't press them on their business. <clears throat> Giselle, right? So that's that. So then when they go and film the scenes, you have field producers who actually are out in the field producing these scenes, right? So after the scenes have been fully produced, well, after each day, so say for instance, we're filming a scene now, there is someone who will go ahead and take down a note of everything that happened in that particular scene. They're then gonna go ahead and forward it over to the network executives and the higher ups. And then they receive notes based off of what the field has um, filmed and produced, right? So then you get those notes from the executives and everyone, and that kind of guides what they do and do not want to see more and less of throughout the season. You cannot have um, a show and think that you're gonna just go ahead and dictate what comes on our network. Bravo is owned by NBC. They control everything. So they can only film A, what they know and they're told, and B, what the damn network wants them to, you know, wants them to continue to follow. So then everything is filmed. And then after that, story producers edit it in post-production for the season. So the note may be, um, this is the episode, and notes may be, take that out, give me more of that. So then they're going to take Kenya's scene out and give you more of, of someone else's scene, right? Because that is what the network wants the story to be for the storyline of, of that season. Eric's job is the executive producer, and he's supposed to make sure that all of these things are produced to make an exciting, compelling season. But if you are allegedly, I don't know how much I want to give up because I don't want people to. Huh. I mean, if you are allegedly, if you may or may not be around, how would you know allegedly? I don't know. I'm just saying that that's the team. Now, I hate that we don't hit it. That's the team. You got to be around to know what the hell's going on, don't you? So if you're not around to know what's going on, then you don't really care about the contents of the show. One thing about Carlos, and each one of those ladies has said it Carlos will cuss them out and chew them out if they weren't producing. So if you don't have someone that is that involved and that care that much, then I don't know. Um, do you think it's, I really feel like personally, it's a combination of the ladies <coughs> playing, it's a combination of production, and it's a combination, if we're gonna be quite frank, of people who are executives over black shows that don't, that don't have black voices. If you are not black, you cannot understand what these ladies are going through it may be relatable but it's only relatable to a certain degree because it is not your lived experience and you're so far removed from that experience that you don't really know what's going on so in my opinion the blame why he should deserve some of the blame he was getting blamed for stuff that he didn't do yeah. is what i'm gonna say do you guys have any opinion on who is to blame who is not to blame for the the show having a gradual decline you can look at it from back, you know, Nene leaving and Porsche leaving and, you know, Phaedra possibly leaving as being declines. But what do you guys think is the true decline of the show? Antonio, what do you feel like is to blame for the decline of the show? Like a specific situation was to blame. I think <clears throat> for me, I don't, yeah, it didn't just start this season or last season. I, I do think it's been gradual. I feel like when you have a good, situation um and you have women there that are you know producing and working and doing what they need to do it's almost like a situation to me where it's like if it's not broke then why why what do you need to fix like is nothing there i feel like when they started pulling out some of those people and you know people getting fired or their episodes getting uh limited then they have to put someone else in in that in the place of that, which may or may not be a good idea, especially if what one of the housewives says is true, whereas they don't really test the girls like they used to, you know, years ago. So I, I think that's kind of what started the whole thing. When you had a really good team, you started 
pulling people out and hoping that somebody new sticks and it just hasn't stuck at this time, unfortunately. Um, then I feel like the season 13, um, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, season 13, the COVID season, I felt like was, they took a big hit from that too, from Nene leaving and then they were trying to film during COVID. It, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't a good situation from what I could see. So I feel like that's when it really, began to to decline going from 12 into 13. I, I still blame production and the higher ups for that. Like you, I, I get it, but you gotta make what's gonna be the best decision, not only for um, the fans, but for you guys as the production company and as the network. Okay. Uh, Jasmine? Well, I guess I can kind of agree. Now, Sammy, I, I don't know if you're going to be cool to come out the bag on me. But um, <laughs> that's your square, baby. Okay. Well, goggles. Well, at the end <laughs> of the day, I do think that what Nene said, if anybody, I'm sure most most of you guys watched the Nene interview, whatever. Um, and Carlos was, you know, saying that, you know, you need certain people, certain personalities to be in the forefront. You need an anchor, which was like Cynthia. Um, you need a big personality or two, which was like the Nene's, the Portia, and maybe, you know, even uh, Kenya or whatever. But at the end of the day, like, I felt like that the decline came from losing those big personalities. Yeah. Um, and then Candy, she is a money maker. She has interesting moments. Her family is more interesting than her to me, but putting her in the forefront to me was the, the bigger mistake. Um, I don't think that she should have not had her accolades or, you know, being the longest running. I don't think that they shouldn't be celebrating her, but having her as like somebody that, you know, that everybody is centered around, I think that was the bigger mistake because regardless of how much Nene got on people's nerves, they all was centered around her. Regardless of how Portia got on people's nerves, they all still wanted to be around her. I mean, even when Candy had those issues, she still made those made made those ways to her baby showers, you know, in her business in some type of way when it even came to her and her first baby daddy. Okay. So I just felt like that was like the decline for me. Um, I don't really know much about production, but if after you saying that, Chase, it, it makes sense of like, you know, everybody has their own point of views and they have their own jobs to do. But if everybody's not doing their job, then something's going to fall through the cracks. Yeah. Um. So I just, you know, I blame I just blame just the higher ups because and, and not having a person that's black that understands that we're not always going to be on some love and hip hop type shit. No, rah, rah, rah. Mm -hmm. There's other interesting moments in our lives that doesn't have to always come with tension, dissension yeah. and goggles. At the same time, so don't say. This is my real hair too, by the way. I just want to make it. Come on, we. I um I blame production for multiple reasons, and one of the biggest ones is centering the show around anybody. They should have learned when Nene left in season seven, and they brought in Kim Fields. They were scrambling and trying to figure out how to make this work. Then you had season nine when they had the whole Phaedra and Candy. All that went down, and it was the network's biggest, I guess, thing of drama to where the fans were going crazy. Then they start listening. That's when they start paying attention to what the fans had to say. So then it seemed like after that they wanted to have not so much hell on camera. So the, the seasons that came after that were very like, I don't want to say timid, but they weren't as interesting to us because of what we had seen before. But they paid so much attention to what the fans had to say that they, they did not lean on what they knew was best. So then they go from having a, a very great cast to tossing in people just doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, trying to make it stick. And nothing stuck. And they still didn't take that and say, well, let's just do what we know we can do versus listen to the fans. So then we have that going on. Y'all City's trying to bring in personalities that people can be centered around when it's supposed to be an ensemble cast. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think we've seen that this year and last year, especially with them trying to take certain people. Because I don't even feel that Candy's in the forefront. Candy was barely that damn there this season. She was She was a big talk, but she was barely there. But they try to center certain people, and as you can see with the reunion charts last year and this year, like certain people just ain't got it. Y'all want them big personalities, but y'all think because y'all can get in their ear and, and tell them what you want them to do, and then they're going to go out there and do it, that it's going to make the show look great. And it's coming off force. Nothing feels real. It's not authentic at all. When we had Nene and Phaedra and all them, no matter how much they got on our nerves, we knew them girls was getting in front of that camera and giving us real TV. They had been together long enough to where they, they had bonds, they had issues. 
it was it was real. What we're seeing now is a bunch of BS, and that's why it's not translating translating the right way on, on the TV. It's 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 annoying to watch. I really dislike to see Marlo and Shrey become who they because they 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 heavy hitters. They've been here long enough. Y'all know how this game goes. So for y'all to be on this season looking real amateur, it just it 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 I, it, it fell flat for me. Like we can blame the girls, we can blame whoever we want to blame, but I'm gonna still place it on production because y'all supposed to be running this. Another thing I feel like they give them girls, Candy and Kenya. I said I've said this before specifically, they give them too much power on to say, I'm not gonna do this, I'm not gonna do that. If this is the show and they're supposed to be living their real lives, make them work or send their ass on. It's really that simple for me. And then you can't pulling other girls to try to pick up that slack and try to force them to talk about things they don't want to talk about. Like, mm -hmm. and another thing Jasmine said that makes a lot of sense, like this is not loving hip hop over there. Like you have, why they, they claim to be born like Sonya and Candy and Kenny, them girls are really working. They have like real businesses and stuff they're trying to build. So they're not gonna just be on TV acting a fool just for the hell of it anymore. Like back then when they first came on, they, they was trying to grind. Of course we're gonna get on here and show our ass and we're gonna get these episodes and we're gonna come back next year and do it all over again. But now that they're building, so if they cannot give you what you want, then stop bringing them around. But don't put them on the camera and try to force something out of them that you know is not going to happen because it's it's just it's not going to happen. And then you're going to have people over here who can just be told anything, doing anything, and now you got us over here looking like, what the hell is this? We don't even want to watch this no more. And you got the fans screaming for reboot, sending y'all death threats and all kind of other stuff. Like, do y'all's job as production. Quit letting the fans and the ladies run y'all responsibility sheets. It's just, it's not working. Mm. You better speak your speech. Well, I don't really have much to say after that. I don't know how to come after that. Uh, yeah, what he said. Yeah, what she said. Yeah, what he said. Yeah, what they said. Um, I don't really have nothing to say. Um, I just want people to do their jobs, and I want um, people to be interested again. I want people to be you in order to in order to. You can work with anybody, right? Any I can work with anybody, but I feel like you know even though I do feel like I give my best all the time, I get excited when, you know, I see someone that I love and, you know, I get to work with somebody I love, you know what I mean? Like, and so the one thing about um, Carlos King was he loved all of those girls, you know, he lived for them for different reasons. And so when you live for somebody, you push them the best that you could push them and you get the most that you can get the most out of them. And I just want, people to be, I don't want to say you got to be a fan like that, but you know, kind of, you know, living for the girls that you work for and wanting the best for them. Because when they shine, everybody shine, everybody eats. The network looks great. The advertising dollars are up, the ratings are up. You look good. You're getting more shows. You're getting more money. You're doing your thing. Um, so yeah. Hmm. Now let's see about this. So before we move on to our next topics, lastly, there has been Hella reports coming out um, that they have decided on who they kind of want to keep around if they're going to go ahead and do a partial cast. Um, and that group um, consists of two for sure they're thinking of and a possible. So they got two books and a possible um, that they're floating around. Um, let me see if I can find it. Y'all know it's me, so I might not be able to find it. I know I uploaded it. But no, I did my job. One moment. Do your job. I did my job this week. Huh? What you got? Say, do your job, EDF. <laughs> oh, wow, That's wow. not my job. I, I Jamie get a production assistant, but I don't get one. We'll talk about That's that a little bit. Insane. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about Colorism. Oh, yeah. That is definitely <laughs> We got something to talk about. We do. <laughs> we surely do. I don't know where it's at. Give me one second. I'm gonna go ahead and upload it because it is important. And normally I would just move on. But I could have sworn I uploaded it, so I'm gonna do it again. I think you, it, you sent it, but you, maybe you didn't upload it, friend. No, because everything else is there but that one, so I may have just oh, missed okay. that one. I'm gonna go ahead and blame me. See, I'm gonna take responsibility for my actions. You see what I'm saying? Please do, and I'll take responsibility for jumping off this panel. We all do. Wait, what? <laughs> for jumping off this panel. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, and in the comments. Okay, all right, that's I, all right. I swing them. We're human, we're human. Okay, you guys, so the um, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. Uh -uh. Okay, <laughs> the reported housewives 
they're interested in keeping. Um, it appears to be that Candy and Kenya have been um, guaranteed, not guaranteed, but they're basically a shoe in with the possible being Sheree. Um, not only is Sheree a possible, but they have been reaching out to, I should hope this is the right picture because it's so small and I can't see. Yes, it is. They've been reaching out to Portia Williams, Guavadia, but her asking price is very high. Now, the word on the street is that they're looking for, the word that I got anyway, I personally got that they were looking for three new housewives. So that leaks, so that means that my people, they tell the truth. Um, so basically, they're looking for three new wives at the bare minimum um, to film the next season um, to go along with some of the ladies that they already have. So that means... Wait a minute, what did you just post? Oh, let me go back. Yeah. That means that they're looking to at least keep around. From what I'm gauging, it looks like Kenya and Candy are going to be there. And mm -hmm. Sheree may possibly be there if they cannot afford Portia, is what it's giving me. <laughs> now, Give that me. means that Sonya, Marlo, Drew, Monietta, and Courtney may have been given their walking papers that they were informed that they were let go or they may not be coming back before the reunion. There's also a, reu a, a rumor out there that everybody has been let go and out of all of the potential wives to come back, these are the ones plus Portia um, and then new wives. With that being said, uh, <laughs> how do y'all feel about that? Um, Sammy, how do you feel about that being the potential group? Do you think that that's a good group or do you think we could mm. switch that group around and bring new people? <laughs> if like like be, Bravo being smart, it would make the most sense to go with them three. They're, they're veterans. They know what to do. They can get on here. We can get the new girls in here and we know we can shake it up with these. Personally, I would say Kenya, Candy, and Sonya or uh, Sonya, Kenya, and Drew. Only because I feel like Drew and Sonya still, got, they got some, especially Sonya, you get Marlo and Sheree out of her way, I feel like she can really give us something. Like she can be herself. She's not mm -hmm. going to be following behind them. The only downside with Drew is that if she comes back, then we get more scripted, more we don't we get more more BS, and that that becomes annoying after a while. But I see what Bravo's doing with Ken, Kenya Candy and Sheree. Like they know they can get something from them girls, and they know we can bring some new girls in here. Bring some new girls. Don't don't bring no fans. We can bring some new girls in here, and we can really get it going. Antonio. Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> um, so I'm okay with the group. I do feel like uh, one of them for me is interchangeable. Um, uh, for example, Sheree. She, uh, you can switch Sheree out to me with Sanya, or you can switch her out with Drew. The reason why I say Drew is I agree with. Uh, I'm sorry, I agree with Sammy in reference to Sanya. I feel like maybe if you kind of get her in a different situation she would be less of a follower and she would really get her footing and become a, a good housewife. Um, I do feel like she has a really good story, but she's, I don't know, something is off with her and she's just, she's given follower. Um, Drew, I say, because Drew also does have a, a really good story. The only thing is with Drew, I don't know if she, you know, if she come back and she's playing that victim type of role like she's been doing. I don't I don't need that. I don't want that. The housewives ain't victims. Like pull it up, pull it together, go to the table, show everybody what you got and cuss the people out if you you know if you need to. Like I, I think I I think Drew could, but I don't know if she is um intelligent enough to put that best foot forward. I also feel like if Drew comes back, um then Courtney may need to still be a friend. Um, because I, I say that because I feel like with this whole situation going on with Drew and her husband, Courtney would be kind of the lead way to, she could possibly help Drew's storyline in a way, especially if she's bringing in some additional drama, things like that. So, um, but I think the group itself is, is pretty good. I, I think the, the ones, you know, if they were to keep Sheree, Sheree would be fine. I feel like Sheree can give what she needs to give if she has the right people um, around her. Um, them sh telling them, you know, prior to the reunion that this may be their last one, it makes sense because based on the 
Um, the trailer, it seemed like everybody was kind of, well, not everybody, but a lot of them were doing, <laughs> a, you know, we saw Sheree print out, you know, she can, you know, print out newspapers and bring bags and, you know, her and Candy, I think I, I've never seen them kind of go at it like that. So I would that would be something I'd be interested in doing. Um, the ones that they did not name, if these are the strong three, I understand also why they would not be bringing any of them back. I get it. Hey, uh, excuse me, Jasmine. Thank you, Antonia. This is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they are so. I just. I'm just trying to. I got to go. This is I'm not doing it no more. I can't take it. That's I it. I, I, they gonna either change it up or they gotta get rid of everybody because the defense is terrible. Candy don't have the strong line. Candy don't even be there. And Sheree, why is she even there? She's slow as molasses. So boom, whatever. And and Drew still feels like a box chevy. So what else is going on? No, 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 I just feel like they're again. This is showing that they're not. They're they're going to just go with whatever. Oh, they said they don't want Sam, but let's not bring her back. Like they don't have a black voice. Because if you're looking at this, I don't care how much you say you don't like Milo. I don't care how much you're saying that Drew. I mean, Drew is a victim and she's lame. She's beautiful though. She's such a beautiful. She is gorgeous. She is gorgeous. And I must hands down give her that. She's gorgeous. Gorgeous. She is gorgeous. On the outside. With green, she's beautiful. She's a beautiful. On the outside. Hey, on the outside. hey, hey, she's a beautiful woman. On the outside. I'm not, anyway. I'm, hey. <laughs> now, when hey. Allison get a hold of you, Chase, I don't come calling me. Let me well, tell you something. Allison, Allison when you, you get a hold of me, don't come like no cabbage, baby, because I fight. <laughs> I just feel like they're just, it's just throwing something out there just to appease people. Cause at the end of the day, you could say how much you don't like these people, but they brought the show. And if we can say that these three are with a different cast, I feel like it's such a divide. We can say that about either, either group. I do think the only person that should go is Sheree. I don't care if you bring one group back or don't bring the other back. Sheree brings <laughs> nothing to this to this franchise besides just old age. But I and I don't know I mean old age. I mean like I meant like OG, she's been OG. on the show. Oh gee, yeah, OG. she's been on the show for a long time. Please yep. don't come to comments. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she's beautiful, honey. She's you, old. I'm like. <laughs> I just want to be very, I want to be very clear. I'm laughing at Antonio's screen uh, <laughs> tell, y'all. I'm not laughing at Jessica. Right, y'all will get me. Honey. She's she old and cold. Tell. I live for old and cold. Jessica, would, like like would you like Portia to be back? Or do I you would think like, I would like Portia to be back, and I think that she should be a centerpiece, a centerpiece. I think that she could bring either side back. I think that there's a story with her and Marlo because of how they ended with the whole Bolo situation. I think that it can be a story with her and Court Kenya because I don't care how giddy giddy they are right now, they will never be on. Um, they will always have friction because K Portia just does not like Kenya's ways and Kenya just feels like Portia should like her. That's my opinion about it. So <laughs> at the end of the day, like I just feel like those three, if you're keeping those three, it's going to be next season. We're going to be talking about it. I, and then I, if Marlo's gone, I'm still going to say the same thing because it wasn't about Marlo. It's the point of it, she's the most entertaining. She, I feel like that she has calmed down since the first season that she, I mean, since last season, I feel like she's getting those notes like everybody else. I mean, technically, technically her and Sanya are on the same timeline, you know, with how long they've been on the show in regards of holding a peach. So they, if they both have room to go, she has room to go, both of them have room to go. I think that Drew's story ending the way it did, I think she's should have a peach. And I also agree with um, uh, Antonio, but if Drew stays, Courtney got to stay too, because I know that there's going to be some type of story that's going to come from how close Courtney is with Ralph at this point. Like, I hope, I, I was just going to say, I hope they're not doing that. I really truly <laughs> don't think I hope it's not gonna it's not gonna roll over to that because that's disgusting. Like I couldn't that's even disgusting. I could not even mess with Courtney if that was the case after that. That's like, loving hip. Well, I mean, we've seen it, but we didn't get to see it because Portia quit. But I mean, I yeah. guess <laughs> but I think that I think that you know what I'm saying Candy gets away with a lot of stuff because Phaedra should could have been back. I enjoyed her on Ultimate Girls Trip. I enjoyed Eva on Ultimate Girls Trip. I don't I think she be back though. But at the end of the day, I think that you know what I'm saying there's so many different avenues they can take, but I think that Candy should go if she's not available. I think that uh, uh, Kenya should definitely go. I don't care. I mean, even if she would have taped the opening of that thing, 
she still didn't bring nothing but embryos to this show. And that's okay. all I'm going to say. This okay. Show, um, even know but I hope they know. find some money, though. I would like for them to entertain mm -hmm. Portia a, a little bit. Even if she don't come back, I would like for her name to be mentioned. I know. I mean, well, here's, Cynthia can go too. Okay, I love the Bob baby, but Bob on down. Well, I like Cynthia as a friend. She got in there. She got Cynthia is the unsung hero of this season because she got in there and got conversation that made sense. Get started, and I have Cynthia, to that. that's what a friend's supposed to do. Three, so it makes sense that she kind of knew. She knew what to how do. to do it. Kind of knew what to do. That's what a friend's supposed to do with a show. The friend's supposed to get in. You know, sometimes the friend get in some mess, but the friend's supposed to ask the question. Well, girl, well, what's the tea? Because I heard that y'all had some beef going on. I'm just trying to get caught up. She didn't even eat her first course, and that's what she asked. The first thing she asked when she sat down. You get what I mean? She did. Unless you know, Shamia did the same thing. As soon as she popped up, Shamia did the same thing. But after the food, Courtney, they knew they know how to get in there and play because they've been around for a long Unless time. Unless Cynthia's going to talk about why she got divorced, she doesn't need to come back. Oh. I think she would, though. She didn't even do. She didn't even tell Carlos at this. Well, she's gonna be in. She gonna be in Beverly Hills. You know they're not gonna ask her too much about it. So, um, in my opinion, I really think that um, at first I was kind of here for the the Candy Kenya Sheree casting because um, well, my dream casting would involve Portia. I don't know if it involves Candy and Kenya. But it does involve Portia. I think that I've, I've said for the longest that when Nene got up off of her seat, it should have been given to Portia. But they did not cast around Portia enough for it to happen. And in the season, season 13, yes, but it was COVID, so it couldn't happen that way. And then season 14, and she was checked out anyway. And season 14, she didn't come back. I think that her not coming back, them not giving us Kenya versus Cynthia last season, that really, those two things hindered last season from being great. I think that if Porsche quit, then you know what? Just bring everybody else back. Why are you firing people yeah. if Porsche quit? I yeah. don't understand why Cynthia couldn't have come back. And then we would have saw, unfortunately, we would have saw the disillusion of her marriage as well as her friendship with Kenya. So I think that we were robbed in that sense. Um, when it comes to Sheree, Sheree and Candy right now, the gloves are off. They have heavy beef in the street. And Kenya is the middleman between those two. She's friends with Sheree. And she's friends with Kenya, so that puts her in that. And then the other girls are just the other girls, whoever they cast or whatever, right? For me, um, I am not a hater, so I do see value in Drew's presence being on the show going forward in her storyline. I'm not no hater, so I'm always get a girl her G. She has a, a heavyweight storyline. She just bogs it down being such a liar, being mm -hmm. such an actress. When I watched the past. <laughs> I said, I don't know if Drew is being herself on the past and acting on the Real Housewives of Atlanta or mm -hmm. being herself on the Real Housewives of Atlanta and acting right. on the past. That's how damn good she was. It's yeah. annoying. She's annoying. She is, I cannot take it. You know, her, you know I, I've been re-watching season 15. Allison <clears throat> is too traumatic. And not, <laughs> it's too traumatic. You know, spoil it oily. You know what spoil it oily is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oily, oily. Uh, it's, it's too, it's too <laughs> Come on, y'all. We got to have a little fun. We got to punch it up a little bit. No, but seriously, uh, it's too traumatic for me. I love Allison Down, and I have definitely have sympathy for that situation. I just think that, you know, I'm not blaming because, you know, this whole Candy and Courtney ordeal from Speak On It. I watched the actual live Speak On It. And I'm not blaming Allison for their comments and their reactions. I just think that certain people you shouldn't put in certain situations. And considering that she's on a, in a fragile state, I just would no longer film with her. I hate, I hate to oh, say that, true. but mm. I just wouldn't put her in a situation to be publicly scrutinized because you know I, I you think it, that people I, have. It was a big old deal everybody made, but watching out. That's why I asked, like, is that it? Like, I, I understood mm -hmm. what Courtney was saying. Like, why would you bring her in this environment when you know how we get down? So I, I agree know. with you, Sammy. No, I do agree I, with you, Sammy, because I, I was like, like that I don't think that Candy should have got that backlash because she done brought everybody, whether she done got beef with them or not. She has brought everybody on speak on it. On the People don't like Courtney at all. It, I don't Definitely. think it was a bad thing. I said that on the, on Monday. At the end of the day, if you know you even you got mental illness and you got all this stuff, one don't don't be inebriated. Don't add to your situation. And two, you're not gonna run up on me. It, 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 we're not gonna keep blaming it though. You know she's kind of crazy. No, no, I'm kind of crazy too. 
So at the end, like you can't keep on jumping on people like for real. <laughs> now when when you got when you guys are talking about Sonya, the thing about Sonya is she is, I said it a million times, she is a great 30-minute USA reality show. She is not great on the Housewives because in group dynamics, she does not give. And I would say that it may be, have been a disservice to her this season on the production end of things because there's a whole, you can see watching the beginning of the season, they're building a storyline of Kenya versus Sonya, and then all of a sudden, exactly. it just was scrapped. I'm, I've watched it up from before that. They were arguing at the, the Gucci brunch. Then they get down to the um, actual fundraiser. And Sonya's like, I don't really like it like that. But she showed raised that money. Like, it was a storyline building that obviously um, climaxes at Candy's party. And the whole storyline was cut. So I don't know if they didn't do her um, justice or not. But I don't want to see it. And the reason why is WWE Diva. She should be on, what's the, the, the Divas reality show? What was that called? Total Diva. The rest of the Divas. She's, she's a great total Diva. But she is not a great Real Housewife. And that's just how I feel about that. Um, Courtney is a villain that needs to be added to the conversation. Portia is not going to like her. No. Candy, like her now. Like Candy her don't now. like her. If Drew come back, that's going to be a, a issue. And if Sheree comes back, Sheree is her friend into the group. So I think that Courtney makes sense as a friend. Now there's no peach now because I think that she's slimy. I think that she's disgusting. I think that she's gross. I think that she's very Kim D-ish, like she is gross. But the reaction that I saw in that live chat, nobody's gotten anybody to react like that this whole season other than Courtney. They are reacting to her, whether you like it or not. No. So maybe if she does deserve to be brought into the conversation. With that being said, um, we're gonna move right along. We got a little bit more time, so we're gonna move on to a couple of other things. Real Housewives of Atlanta, get it together, bring our girls. I don't wanna use that, cause that's not nice. Real Housewives of Atlanta, fix our show. And if you need somebody to holler at, come holler at us. Consult us. We'll tell you what to do. Make sure that you guys like and subscribe. Make sure that you guys tune into the Real Housewives of Atlanta recap as they're doing the reunions on Monday. Make sure that you guys tune into the Real Housewives of New York. Make sure that you guys tune into Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Make sure that you guys are continuing to tune into the Lunch and Lean as you've been doing. Thank you so much, my sweet babies. And make sure that you guys tune into the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City as premiere next week. And so the following week, I'm sure we'll have a recap on that. With that being said, let's move right along with our show. We're going to get these two and we're going to get on out. Well, I thought that we were going to get out, but I don't know if we're going to be able to get out as quickly as possible because uh -huh. this next topic is nothing nice, honey. Did I upload that picture? Damn, am I doing my job? I am. Oh, Ooh. honey, let's get into it, child. I about it. Oh, I ain't forget. Ooh. So, this, so <laughs> I don't know when this is aired because I haven't watched Love & Hip Hop. I'll be very transparent. I I interviewed to do Love and Hip Hop, and they didn't pick me, and so I ain't watched it ever since. So there's that. Oh, mm. so bump Love and Hip Hop, but it's been good this season, though. <laughs> thanks a lot, Antonio. <laughs> it has been good, though. I don't know what to say. I hate to hear that about you, but it's been good, though. Cause... <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, so, <laughs> so what happened here? Erica Mena and Spice sat down. I don't know what they're arguing about, uh, what, what the cause of the sit down was, but I know of the breakdown of the fight and we're gonna talk about it. So Erica Mena and Spice sat down with um, Shekinah and um, in the heat of an argument, Erica called Spice a monkey. Blue monkey. And the reason why she, so what happened with a blue monkey at that, you're right. So what happened, this stems from Safari showing, Erica feels that Safari showed um, Spice more concern when she was, she had her near-death experience. Um, then she showed, then he showed for Erica, the mother of his children. And so Erica asked Spice how she would feel if the roles were reversed. And Spice was basically like, listen, you know, you carrying this single mother thing, you're not the only single mother in the world, baby. You got to chill on that, beating that single mother drum. And so um, then Spice, you know, out of the blue says that, you know, that's why her son doesn't like her. Um, Erica gets angry and Erica flips the table. They're mm -hmm. arguing back and forth. Um, and uh, Spice continues to yell at Erica that her son hates her. Um, and then Erica screams um, that Spice should have died. Um, and then she calls her a monkey, a blue monkey. 
Um, and uh, they are yelling. And then as uh, Erica is getting carted away to the vehicle, um, she calls her a monkey again, and she um, makes monkey noises. Now, I let me tell you something. I'm she made monkey noise. noise. Oh she made God. monkey noises. Oh, yes, she did. She made monkey noises, y'all. I was really flabbergasted. And you know what? I wasn't flabbergasted at the fact that Erica Mena was the one who did it. Mm-hmm. I was just like the unmitigated gall. You have there are black women, black people on that production team. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're standing around these black people. You are a mother to black children. You ingratiate yourself into black culture. And I understand that she hit you with a low blow. And normally I don't tell nobody how to fight, but Chase Luther King don't care nothing about that racism. Oh, I don't play that racism stuff because the thing is, just as she's sitting around, just as I can say, oh, I wonder how long she's been wanting to say, oh, um, my son doesn't like me. The same can be said, how long have you been around all of these black people and been calling them monkeys. So now you you black, you black, you black, but you black like this. You black <laughs> like this, but you ain't black like this. You get what I'm saying? And so y'all get in on it because I was really finna cuss. And I, I want to be the example and not cuss her out, but she is disgusting. She is trash. It's girls like her, girls like Evelyn Lozada. Yeah. I'll never see it for them. I'm not watching. I barely watched Basketball Wives last season. I won't be watching it this season. I did not forget what you said, and I won't forget what she says either. F both of them. Y'all got it. Whoever want to talk and talk, because I don't. I am upset. Um. Well. <laughs> being, being that, because it, it it was I didn't know the girl made the monkey noises. I was I like, wow, monkey noise, I'm, I'm gonna have to go back and watch. But Me too. it was BS. Like I understand, mind you, I. I, they didn't show that in, in the little preview. I sympathize with Erica because they have been coming at her being a mother and they've been talking about her child for a while, you know, in this arena of loving hip hop. The men have done it, I believe, since Santana done it, but I don't remember her giving any of them any type of racial slur. And then on top of that, it was it was an article back, like I want to say 2014, 15, where she referred to a group of black girls as monkeys back then. So mm-hmm. at this point, it's like, this is just, this is what you're doing. Like, I get slice cut you. Go for it, get her back. But because you went the racism route, you don't get that from me. That's like if she and I got into it, and the first thing she want to do is call me the F word. No, ho, you you mad? But you, that's something that that's what you've been at. Like you've been wanting to to yeah. She she been wanting to to it. It just it made no sense for that to be her first course. Like I'm gonna go at you in this way. I wish they would have let Spice get her. Like in in I can I can say Spice was wrong. Spice was wrong to say that about her child. But Erica, you got that mouth. Remember that you can't handle my mouth, motherfucker. Like you, I'm sure you could have dug and found something else to say, yeah, versus said. going at the girl, calling her a monkey. It, it, and the people say, "What's well, because she looked like a monkey?" Nah, that was she. She would. She would have got into it with Chicago. Who said she that? Like, people saying that. The internet was on, on the road. I don't see if she got into it with Chicago. I don't see. She, I don't think she would have called Chicago no monkey. She would have mm. called Mimi or Bambi or none of them. She would have called them no monkey. That was something. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, dark, deep rooted, nasty, ugly. Yeah. You guys, your quick thoughts because we got to lean out. We over time. Well, let me just say this, honey. As a chocolate woman, that'd be the first thing somebody want to talk about is your goggles, the way the skin, um, and everything else. You know what I'm saying? Your hair and all that stuff. That's the first they want to say about it. But I, I definitely agree, with, especially with the Evelyn thing. Um, it always and to me, it's usually the Spanish women. You know what I'm saying? That really have that. That's why, you know, I love Cardi B, but at the same time, she's been, she's called us roaches before as well. Like when she's got mad. And like you said, Sammy, if somebody was to get mad at you and the first thing they want to bring up is, is to call you F word, that again gives you that, that thought, okay, so you been, you, you, that's what you think of me. That's, that's that is, that's, yeah. that's in your self conscious. Like at the end of the day, I watched it. I don't feel like Spice brought up her child. She brought up her child. She brought up her child by saying, well, I've been doing it for 16 years. She also, and that's when Spice came back and said, well, uh, and but he don't like you. Okay. <laughs> that's, the, that's the counter thing. Like she didn't break up the child. And I honestly don't think she talked about child. I can get how somebody said, girl, she was talking about a blah, 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 whatever. But at the end of the day, she also still doubled down on it and said, you said that. You the one told us that, that he don't like you. And that's why I think Erica got mad at because she brought up a conversation that was probably supposed to be private or just with the girls and Spice used it against her. Spice was wrong for that. I don't think that she should have brought it up. But I also cannot get with these Spanish women that, especially 
especially with women of darker complexions, that the first thing they want to do is throw out animal type of things. Like at the end of the day, I'm confident in who I am. Beautiful. Bam. Don't don't mind it. But in the grand scheme of it, I've definitely had those situations where, you know, colorism has been a, a topic in my mind when someone's arguing with me. Like, I, I, you know, me and Antonio has talked about it before about somebody in the comments or something like that. But at the grand scheme of it, like, it, it's not that even hurts your feelings. It's just the fact that, like, we're, we're too old to be talking about, you okay, N-word, okay, blackie, okay, monkey, ooh, ooh, ooh. At the, at the end of the day, Erica Mena has two Jamaican mixed kids that are also Jamaican. And for her to even say something like that is disgusting. And if we want to talk about people, kids looking like, I mean, people look like. No, no. We'll uh, Antonio, your quick, your quick thoughts. Your quick thoughts, Antonio, um, as we lean out. Um, it's crazy. It, it, I, I, Cause I seen some people saying, oh, well, you know, you, she, she went at Erica and that was just how Erica respond and i think like no that's like arguing with someone that's of a different race in a grocery store and they immediately they call you the n-word or something like that is not the same so i i think that that was something that has been on erica mind like you don't just come out your mouth and say that it's almost like a practice like if me and this person ever get into it the first thing i'm gonna do is call this person <laughs> whatever that word is that you've been thinking in your mind and that's kind of what i got and it's crazy because it's like oh Erica, to me, by saying that, she feels like, oh, I, 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 I look a lot more or closer to European yeah. um, standards than Spice does. So she, she looks like a monkey. Here's the thing, though, Erica, you don't know what, and not to talk about anybody's kids, but she don't know what her kids will look like as they get older. <laughs> they are still young. They are still young. They're still growing into their looks. That skin can be dark, that nose can be wide, and those lips can be big. Um, I'm, I'm so you can't, and I, when people say those things about people like that person is a monkey, that's typically what they are going for. Like, oh, you're dark, you're dark skin, your nose is wide, your lips are big, you a monkey. That's typically from what I've seen, what they go by. So Erica, be, be mindful of your words, please. As we are all going to be mindful of our words and lean out, but before we do, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to my esteemed panelists as guests, Sammy, Antonio, and Jasmine. Um, thank you guys for sticking with us here. Um, as always, leave us comments and like and subscribe. Support us on our other adventures. Stop by and get some merch, baby. Buy this t-shirt. You see how the t-shirt sit up on me? I might, you know, people might say we might not have nothing to talk about, but I think this is still raining in Atlanta, <laughs> honey. Um, it's, I think uh, that was I think that's um, Marlo Sheree, Sonya, Courtney, and Drew Tears. Because when people say they ain't coming back, I'm sorry. Please, well, I'm sorry. Somebody need to drive by uh, Kim and Croix and take that girl a cover since she only got that pillow outside. <laughs> I was going to say the, before yeah, we go, y'all in Alpharetta, go by. <laughs> Y'all go, go buy some merch so I can get some smaller glasses. So. <laughs> <laughs> and tell you, go buy what. Oh, go buy, go buy Kim a little throw from the Ross. Like <laughs> wow, because Corey has allegedly me because Corey has allegedly given her divorce papers and a pillow, so she don't need a pillow. Locked out the house. Oh, yeah, she Wait, oh my god! So she's gonna be in a scooter with a blanket and a neck pillow <laughs> with a handicap stick. Oh, and no weed, but you don't hold a weed. And no weed. Where is your house no key? Not the scooter. Where is your house <laughs> <key>? <laughs> Pressure wash that motherfucker. Hey. Oh, boy. All right, you guys. I want to thank you guys for leaning in. Um, lend a pillow where you can. Thank you guys. Have a good night. Well, a good afternoon. Good over the time. The day it is where you at. Have some good lunch. Bye. 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 Good night.